Hey everyone, in this episode, I'm going to give you four key takeaways that I personally think everybody should look out for when they are getting clean and sober. If you analyze these four areas in your life when you're getting clean and sober, or if you have substantial amounts of sobriety time already, you're going to be set up for more success. Enjoy the show. Here we are, Real Recovery Talk. I am your host, Tom Conrad. In today's episode, it is just me. Benjamin B. is again doing his thing. First things first, thank you for tuning in to this episode. Whether you're listening on the podcast app or watching on YouTube, much appreciated. If you can, if you know somebody that would benefit from this content, please feel free to share it with them. You can always just send them a link, whatever the case is. But in the end, you can leave us a review too. Reviews are great. We love them. And it really just helps keep the fire lit for us and knowing that people are watching the stuff that we're putting out. In the end, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about your specific situation, you can always reach out to myself or Ben, Tom at realrecoverytalk.com and Ben at realrecoverytalk.com. We would love to have a conversation with you about your specific situation and see if we can help. Alrighty. So in today's episode, like I said, I want to give you four areas that when we're getting clean and sober that I want you to take a look at. I want you to analyze and see if you're doing these four things. And if you are, then you're going to go far and long in your sobriety journey. I promise you that. All right. The first thing that I want you to take a look at, and this goes for, I don't care how much sobriety time you have. I want you to look at your everyday actions. Are your everyday actions lining up with the person that you want to be? And I know this is can sound like, oh, you know, so philosophical or whatever the case is. But on a surface level, I want you to analyze your everyday actions because I want you to remember something that people are, in fact, watching you. And a lot of times we're taught in this whole recovery culture thing that it doesn't matter what other people think. I tend to disagree. I do think it matters what people think because whether we like to admit it or not, People influence us. They have influence over our lives. So when I get clean and sober, I want to make sure that my actions are lining up with what I'm saying. Now, what does that look like? In the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, any 12-step program, church groups, any sort of support program where you can get clean and sober, Oftentimes, and I hate to say often, but it's true, you see people inside the meetings, they spout off and say things that, you know, or they're super sober, you know, listen to me, I'm, I got this all figured out. And then when you see them outside of the meeting, you know, in the real world, you see a different side of them. And those are the people that I don't think really have much to offer because when they're inside the meeting, the things that they're saying, the way that they're acting, the words that are coming out of their mouth is for show. I want to see your actions. Do your actions line up with what you are saying? And I know the people that I am closest with in my sobriety circle which is rather large. I know a lot of people that are clean and sober. They are all around good people. And I can tell that by the actions in their everyday life. They're good parents. They're good mothers. They're good fathers, sons, daughters. They care for their children. They are reliable when it comes to work. They help other people get clean and sober. They don't gossip. They don't do X, Y, and Z. And I think that's important. So I want you for the first tip, I suppose, is to analyze your life and analyze your everyday actions and see if they're lining up with the way or the person that you truly want to be. All right. The second thing is, is I want you to continuously be a student. We see this a lot with people that get clean and sober and they put some sobriety time together that they all of a sudden want to scream from the hilltops and they want to tell people how to get clean and sober. And those are the types of people that generally people don't listen to all that often because 
They are completely ego driven. I know a lot of people that have gotten sober and they say, well, if you don't do it this way, then you're not going to be sober. You're destined to relapse. And those aren't the types of people that I'm going to personally take advice from. I try and always be a student, whether it be in sobriety, whether it be in business, whether it be at work, whether it be in my relationships as a son, as a husband, as a father, there's always things that I can learn, ways to do things differently. And when people are, when I'm having conversation with whoever it is, my wife or one of my sober supports, my sponsor, whatever the case is, I'm listening through the through the ears of a student. I heard one time from somebody, I don't know who it was, but one of the worst responses that we can give somebody when they're talking to us, uh, you know, giving us maybe criticism or advice or something is saying, I know. Because the term I know implies that you know. Everything that I'm telling you, you already know. So why am I bothering telling you or giving you the advice that probably you asked for, so on and so forth? So that's the second thing. I want you to always just have the mindset of being a student. When we're going through whatever program it is that we choose to do, be a student. Don't try and be the teacher because you are in a position to be a student. And if we can hold that mindset moving forward, always, I'm over 12 years sober now and I still implement this, I don't know it all, having that mindset, you'll go a long way. All right, the third thing that I want to talk about is set a good example for people. You have, Like I said in the first point, there's, there's people that are watching you. Now, there could be people watching you and criticizing you and, you know, saying, well, he should be doing it this way or he should be doing it that way. I don't care about those people. You should not should on people. You should not should on people, if that makes any sense. But people are watching you and you need to set a good example. And this, I think, is very important in sobriety. Again, these kind of all tie in. But I like to spend my time with people that I enjoy being around, and I enjoy being around them because they are setting an example of somebody that I maybe want to aspire to be like. They have good relationships. Their marriage is healthy. They have good uh, relationships with their employers, their networkers, their good communicators. They keep their commitments. Those are the types of people that I like to spend the most time with. And so if we can have the mindset of I'm going to set a good example for people because everybody's watching and we like to think, well, nobody really cares about me. False. People do watch you. And I think it's important to be able to emulate a good person. Again, this isn't just about putting down the drink and the drug. We need to be a good person. If people get clean and sober and they don't change the aspects of their lives that make them a good person, then what's it all for? I I know a lot of people that have stopped drugs and they've stopped drinking and they are miserable. And arguably, I would have rather been around them when they're drunk than sober. So really think about that. Set a good example for people. All right. And the last thing I want to talk about is just continuously working on ourselves in multiple different areas. And this can be in the gym. This can be with our nutrition. This can be in our marriages. This can be, you know, you name it, constantly working on ourselves. And there's multiple different ways to do that. Find what it is that you enjoy find maybe a hobby or two and work towards learning how to do that. I've said it before, this whole podcast and the YouTube stuff and everything that's here, I had no clue how to do any of this stuff, but it came with setting a goal of this is what I want to do and this is important for me and I'm going to work on this until I can achieve it. And when I achieve that, I'm going to work towards the next goal. I have a lot of goals and things that I would like to accomplish inside of the podcast, YouTube, media creation side of things, and I'm constantly working on that. I'm researching 
other YouTube creators. I'm listening to other podcasts. I'm talking to other people that are have the same interests as me. And that is really fulfilling for me because when I can take something and I can create it and I see where my mind was just a while ago versus, you know, a theory till now it's actually a creation. And I did that. It feels really good. And that came with working on myself. And I encourage you find something along those lines, something that you can work on that is going to fulfill you and uh, do it. We constantly have to work on ourselves. Now, Working on ourselves can look many different ways. I encourage everybody, find a therapist, find a sober support group, find a marriage counselor, whatever the case is, do what you have to do to continuously work on yourself and build your foundation of sobriety even stronger. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope you had a great Thanksgiving uh, where I can't even believe it. We're coming up on Christmas here before we know it and then the New Year's, but I am grateful for being able to put this uh, content out to you, and I hope that it does help. And in the end, if you know somebody that would benefit from it, please share it with them. Uh, Let them know that we're here to help them if they so choose. And if you want to reach out to myself or Ben, Tom at realrecoverytalk.com and Ben at realrecoverytalk.com. And in the end, we want to help you turn your mess into your message. That is it. We will see y'all later.